In this video, you're going to learn how to make a tournament matching algorithm in Bubble. In this video, we're going to be going through an example setup where we're going to set up the data, we're going to add some teams to a tournament, and then finally we're going to do a, a workflow that randomly picks teams out of a hat, and then uh, notes once a team is out of the hat that when we go back and pick it that it, we cannot pick the same one again, and basically pair these teams up for a tournament match. So we're gonna dive right in over in our bubble editor and we're gonna head over to our data section, data types. And I've got some other stuff going on in this back end. Yours might look a little bit differently. Maybe all of this will be blank except for it'll have a user type, so on and so forth. But basically uh, I've got a couple data types I wanna set up. First off, teams. And we'll have a team name as a field. And then tournaments. Tournament. And these are going to have a tournament name. Today, okay. <laughs> and then we're going to have teams in the tournament. And that is going to be a list of teams. And then we're also gonna have teams already assigned. And remember that these could be players as well. So instead of this team field type, you might be going and having users. Uh, like for example, in this player one, player two, player three, if you're just doing players, I'm actually doing teams where teams would, would also have players on them uh, potentially, even though with this data type, uh, I didn't I didn't go so far as to do that for this purpose of this example. And then next up, I would like to create pairs. And what a pair is gonna have, it's gonna have two teams. So let's see. And this will be a list of two teams. And then a tournament, we're also gonna have it have All of the pairs, like uh, that, would, like so, player one and player two would be a pair. Player three, player four would be a pair, and player five, player six would be a pair. So we're gonna do. Oh yeah, this. We're gonna find the pairs, and this will be a list of them. Okay, so with that set up, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find actually these teams, and then I'm just going to start creating uh, a couple teams in here. so that we have something to work with. Okay, so with our teams now set up, we have eight of them in our system. And let's also go and go ahead and add a tournament called the All Winners Classic. And right now, none of those teams are in the tournament. We're actually gonna go and set up this primary field for our team to be the team name, so that way we can just see that. And then over here, we're gonna start adding teams to the tournament. Rather than set up all of this workflow, I'm just wanting to show off, you'll have to, um, in your world, manage the data as you see fit. But hopefully with this example, you can understand what uh, another world, even if it's not exactly the same as yours, uh, looks like, and then you could model you, uh, your data after that. So we've just added a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, eight teams to this tournament. None of them have been assigned because this is the list of tournaments already assigned. And so now what we're gonna do, basically here, we've, uh, we've set up our data, we've added teams to a tournament, and maybe this is the part that uh, you were wondering if you were searching around, how in the world do I set up this uh, kind of miniature algorithm, as it were, to randomly pick teams out of a hat in Bubble. This is, uh, this is maybe what, what led you here. So here we're gonna go on to this uh, button and we are gonna build a workflow from scratch here. So the first thing that we're going to do is on our data, we're gonna create a new thing. And that thing is going to be a tournament app pair. But we're only gonna do that when the parent groups tournament, when its list of pairs count is zero, 
meaning there are no pairs in there yet. So we know that we're kind of like starting from scratch. Or we can also do this where the list of pairs And for each of these pairs teams, we want to look at item number two. Oh, that's not it. No. Item number two. Let's see. If it's empty, if it's not empty, it means it's filled. So if it's filled, it means that that fill, it's already filled up. So it's time to create a new one. Now, this is a bit of a safeguard and this isn't actually necessary to run this workflow. And so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go and we're gonna set a custom state. And this is going to be, we're gonna call this one pull from hat. And we'll call this create new matched pair. So to pull this from hat, what I have here on this tournament, on the, on the main page, I have uh, here a custom state called team from hat, and that is a team. And so I'm gonna assign this, and that's gonna be like the little piece of paper that you might pull from a hat if you had written team A, B, C, all, and put them in a hat, and then you were uh, pulling them out one at a time. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to set this custom state and we're going to search for teams. And then we're gonna add some filtering. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. So we're gonna say that the unique ID of what we're filtering is in uh, a particular list. So we've got a couple lists going on. On the one hand, we've got a list of all of the teams that are in the tournament. And then we have a list of the teams that we picked out. Right now, the teams that are picked out is at zero. So if you took this list and you're like, hey, uh, you know, take out any of these ones. Well, that's not a great example. If you got this whole list and nothing has been assigned, you know you can just grab any of them. But if you have this whole list, and let's pretend four of them have been assigned, you actually don't want to just pick any of things in this list. You want this list minus whatever is in this list. And then, you know, you're left with unassigned teams. So we're gonna see how to do that right now where we take the parent groups, so the unique ID of the stuff that we want left over. We want to take the teams in the tournament and then we're gonna come down and do this minus list operation and then we're gonna say, take out the ones that are already assigned. And then we're gonna grab each item's unique ID. So this is filtering it down. So we're just left with the teams that, like if we were at already assigned four of these teams uh, and they're randomly assigned, we wanna just know what's left. So this operation will allow us to do that. And then we're gonna add this thing sorted, sorted, random sorting. And then we're also just gonna say, pick a random item. So this is, this is our uh, secret sauce to pull a random item out of the hat. And then once we have done that, there's a few other things that we're going, going to want to do. We're going to want to make changes to a thing, and that's the result of step one. And we're going to make its paired teams. We're going to add uh, this teams from a hat. So this teams from a hat will get put here. And let's see, let's call this one add to match pair. So it's clear what's going on. And then here, we're actually gonna make changes to another thing, and that is the, the tournament itself. And we're, what we're gonna do now is, because this pulled from hat one, it's already been assigned, we're gonna add that here as well. And then we're also going to say that the list of pairs, because we just created it here, uh, we're gonna add this, the result of step one. So that way, over in our data, for the tournament, it's list of pairs uh, of player one and player two, or player three and player four, or in our case, team one, team two, team two, team three, team four, all gets put in the same spot. Cool. So next up, what we want to do then is we want to copy this. And we're going to pull from the hat again. 
Now there's a couple ways that because we're we're pairing things up, I want to pause here and reflect that we are building a tournament matching thing like this. For example, in the sport of golf, maybe there's a tournament with a bunch of players and there's like 150 players and you're trying to put people into groups of four. And so what I would recommend doing, there's options where you could you could run, you could create a loop and you could go in and you could add a backend workflow and you could you know iterate and then add one or actually add four, I suppose, for the players if you're doing, doing golf. Um, uh, team little you know you're making groups of four but I would just recommend for the sake of simplicity is just to you know unless there are a thousand people in a tournament and somebody needs to click something a bunch just have people click click until all of the people have been assigned and in this case there's only eight so it's four clicks so perfectly reasonable to do that and perhaps if folks want uh, um, a little bit more info on how to do that for a larger list uh, please let, let me know in the comments so we're going to pull from that again, and remember that this pulling from the hat where we're filtering this, this team's already assigned. We just updated here, team's already assigned. This last pull, so it's going to be in this minus list operation, it's going to be minus off of this. Hope that makes sense. Uh, I would recommend that if, uh, if, uh, if you're aiming for uh, an understanding of all this, you know, take your time, rewind it watch it through uh, a time or two for for it to, to sink in because there is uh, quite a bit of things, what's going where and how is this all working together. But so now we've pulled from the hat. We're gonna copy this and paste that. And so we're gonna add to match pair again, this team from hat. And then so now this match pair should have two in it. And then we're gonna also do this again But we don't need to do. We don't need to add this. This is already part of the tournament. We just need that. This pull from hat is also added to this. Team's already assigned because we just pulled it out, which means we're assigning it. And we do that assignment assignment here. And again, this workflow is a little bit dependent on what you're trying to achieve. Like I said, in golf, you would do this a few more times. You would add. Uh, we've just taken two items, two teams in this case, could be two players, and we have pulled them out of a hat added to them to a match pair uh, and then we've done that twice because that's what we're aiming to get here groups of two for who is matched to who in our tournament okay so uh, let's move on and let's go and test out our new amazing um, assigner so the way that we're going to test this is we're going to hit this assign teams to pairs we can see that it ran, and then we're gonna go over and check in our database. We're gonna re refresh the data. So teams already assigned, team D and team F. And a list of pairs, we've got that. So our, our pairs will probably say team D and team F, yep. And then uh, we know that those have been assigned. So let's continue our testing because we wanna make sure that it's different teams every time. So G and B have gotten added, and in these pairs over here, G and B, and notice there's no duplicates because of that minus condition. So then we're going to sign again. Refresh the data. We can see A and C. And then do it one more time. Refresh the data. E and H. So we can see that all of this stuff has now been assigned. And one thing I want to note here is actually, um, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to delete all of these out. And we're going to run it again. Because Bubble, if you have not had much experience with the random assigning in Bubble, sometimes it actually runs it where uh, things are seemingly random, but it's actually the same over and again. So I think it's important to point out that you want to do those random sorting and take a random item because that does appear to make things pretty random here. And so Team E and C, when we look at our pairs, our first one was D and F, so now we're having E and C. So there's two clicks, three clicks, four clicks. And note that you could have some kind of UI that's letting people know that they need to, they need to assign these as they go and do that. But here we have C, E, H, F, B, D, G, A. So all four of those again in the second test, another completely random 
randomized way to assign teams. And then obviously, you know, to finish this off, you would want to be building a UI where perhaps you would just be grabbing, uh, you know, how many teams are in the tournament or how many uh, uh, pairs, I just say, and then you're counting that up and then you're basically having a UI display uh, each of the pairs and then you grab item one and item two and then it displays along here and then perhaps you have a winner of that a winner of a pair and that would be a new data field that you could add here over pair you could say winner of pair and that would let's see this would be a team so of the paired teams you would have that and then maybe you would create a secondary level depending on, so that would get you to this level. You would have to do a little bit more with the data, but you would just kind of continue in that same sequence all the way until you reached uh, the end of the tournament. That's it, folks. So what we've done to recap, we've learned some data setup. We added our teams to the tournament, and then we made that workflow of how to pick teams out of a hat and pair them up. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you like this, like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on how to build things in Bubble. I'll see you next time.